SEP Fanfic Readings Presents A Thousand Words by Olive Juice 28 Chapter 47 Memory Lane Narcissa swept into the library with her usual grace and elegance, but stopped short upon seeing her son fiddling with a collection of small glass vials on the desk in the corner. She knew Harry would be appearing for the weekly appointment soon, but Draco was rarely in place so long beforehand, typically breezing into the room at the same time as their court-appointed friend. "'What are you doing, dear?' she asked as she approached, noting the small crease in her son's brow and the slight downturn of his mouth. He looked up then, his features smoothing out as he met her concerned gaze and smiled. "'Just making sure I have everything for Potter.' Narcissa glanced down at the dozen or so fragile tubes and noticed that they were each labeled in her son's neat looping script. She picked one up carefully and tilted it to read the writing, which said, Valentine's Day. He needs memories for Alcott, for him to show Hermione's parents, Draco explained, and his mother nodded in understanding. He had told her about Harry's request for that one particular memory, but hadn't shared his whole idea with her about wanting to include more recent ones as well. He figured he should fill her in now. I've compiled some of the highlights of our eighth year, he gestured to the group of vials. Figured they might like to see how she's been in recent months, especially if Alcott winds up having to show her the ones from the war. They'll need to be reassured that she's safe now, and that she's happy and doing well. He shrugged and shoved his hands in his pockets, deciding to forge ahead and tell her everything. I also wanted Potter to make a new memory to give them. One of me. Narcissa tilted her head in question, clearly not sure what he meant by that, so he continued. I want to introduce myself to them, to tell them how I feel about her and what she means to me. His cheeks started to heat up, and he felt more than a little embarrassed to be talking to his mother about this, but he persisted. I want them to know that I plan to court her after we leave school, and I want to officially ask their permission for that. I know they don't follow our social customs, but I'd still like for them to be a part of this in whatever way they can. He smiled sheepishly, and chanced to glance at Narcissa, who was watching him with sparkling eyes and a knowing smile tugging at her lips. I don't want it to come as a complete shock when I ask for her hand. Narcissa could not suppress the girlish squeal that left her, and she wrapped her son in a fierce embrace. After squeezing him with surprising strength, she cupped his face with her hands and stared intently into his pewter eyes. I knew it, she spoke softly yet earnestly. I knew she was the one for you the day you told me you'd been to her childhood home. We were in the rose garden, and you were telling me about your reinteraction with her. The smile on your face said all I needed to know. Draco's eyes widened. But that was ages ago, long before she and I were even friends. A mother knows, dear. She patted his cheeks gently and inhaled deeply, a loving smile gracing her beautiful features. She's a wonderful young woman, and I am more than happy to welcome her into our family. "'Well, we're nowhere near that stage yet,' he protested, but she cut him off. "'But you will be some day,' she insisted. "'Yes,' he knew there was no denying it. "'Yes, some day,' he smiled, and then turned a calculating look on her. "'That's why you gave her that book, isn't it?' Narcissa's smile never faltered as she nodded. "'I know I didn't have a daughter to pass it down to. "'But she might.' She almost laughed at the mortified expression that crossed her son's face as he registered the meaning of her words. Draco cleared his throat and looked everywhere but at his mother, trying to find a way to move on from the uncomfortable direction the conversation had taken, and was saved once again by the Wonder Boy who chose that moment to appear in the library's doorway. "'Potter!' he hailed louder than was strictly necessary and heard his mother laugh lightly under her breath as she moved to greet their guest." The trio settled into their usual chairs and commenced with the traditional round of questions from the Aura Potter before turning to friendlier topics. After a half hour or so of catching up on all of the news of the wizarding world, Narcissa excused herself, knowing Draco would not want an additional audience for what he was about to ask Harry to do. When the library doors had closed softly behind her, Draco decided there was no time like the present. "'I was, uh, wondering if you could help me with something,' he began." staring fixedly at his hands, which were clasped in his lap. He could feel Harry's eyes on him, but couldn't quite bring himself to meet them at the moment, fully aware that he was about to bear his soul in front of the wizard. He took a deep breath and pressed on, still looking at his fidgeting fingers. "'I want to create a memory for you to share with the Grangers,' he explained. "'I want to introduce myself to them, and—and and tell them about Hermione.' There was silence following his announcement, 
and after a few seconds he braved a glance in Harry's direction. The bespeckled one was watching him with an annoyingly smug look on his face, and Draco immediately wanted to take his idea off the table, but it was too late. "'Meeting the parents, so to speak, hmm?' Harry grinned at him, which caused Draco to heave an exasperated sigh and roll his eyes dramatically, slumping down in his chair and scowling. "'No, no,' Harry rushed on, his voice sincere, although the grin remained. "'I think it's a fantastic idea.' "'You do?' Draco grumbled, arching an eyebrow. Absolutely, Harry nodded vigorously. I just had no idea you wanted to do something like that. It's rather sentimental of you. Dare I say even sweet? He sniggered as Draco's scowl returned and he was glared at for several seconds. When do you want to do this? Now, came the barely audible and surly reply. Now? Yes. Okay, where do you want? Harry started to look around the library for the best possible spot what was cut off. Here is fine. Draco sat up straighter, and seemed to gain back some of his confidence now that he knew Harry wasn't going to take the mickey out of him for it. All right. Harry shifted his chair a little so that he had more of a direct view of the pale blonde. Whenever you're ready. Draco closed his eyes for a moment, took one more calming breath, and then focused his complete attention on Harry. Or, more specifically, a spot right over Harry's left shoulder— since he thought it would be horrendously awkward to declare his feelings for Hermione were all staring into his former rival's eyes. "'Hello, Mr. and Mrs. Granger. My name is Draco Malfoy.' He paused and cleared his throat as a sheepish look crossed his face. "'I'm sure Hermione has mentioned my name once or twice over the years, and probably not in a very complimentary way.' He chuckled wryly. "'But that's okay. I deserve whatever she's told you tenfold.' I was a right git to her for a lot of years, truth be told, but we've... we've made amends. He stopped again to collect his thoughts. Your daughter is an incredible person. She is kind and compassionate, friendly, brave, and extremely loyal. She's brilliant, too. She's bested me in pretty much every class throughout our entire schooling. He shook his head in mild chagrin. She's a powerful witch, more so than most other magical folk I've encountered. And she's terrifying when she's angry. Harry snorted in agreement then, unable to stop himself, and Draco smirked in response before continuing. She's a little obsessive sometimes, and can be a bit stubborn, but she would fly to the moon and back if she thought it would help someone she loves, although probably not on a broom. Both he and Harry chuckled, knowing it was true. She has the biggest heart and the most beautiful smile. It lights up the room. His face took on a faraway look and his voice grew soft. She brought hope back into my life after several years of darkness, and has made me happier than I have ever dreamed possible. She's changed me from the inside out and made me a better man. His voice hitched and he blinked a few times. I still think she deserves better, but I'm not about to let go of the best thing that ever happened to me, and I'm still working on becoming someone worthy of her. I love her and I plan to love her for a long time, if that's all right with the two of you. Draco shifted his gaze so he was looking directly at Harry now. I would like to pursue a formal courtship with Hermione once we leave school. I know that might seem very old-fashioned, but it's a tradition still practiced by many in our world, particularly in pure-blood families, and I would greatly appreciate your permission to do so. He looked earnestly at Harry for a second, completely lost in this one-sided conversation before looking down and clearing his throat again. He focused once more on the spot to Harry's left. I hope, one day soon, we'll have a chance to meet in person. Until then, I've sent several of my own memories of Hermione to Alcott so he can show you how she's doing here. He's a distant relative of mine, and a renowned expert in the field of memory charms and the reversal of their effects. He felt his eyes sting and his throat get tight, but he was determined to make it through this. She misses you both tremendously. She has no idea that we are attempting to restore your memories. She tried everything she knew to do herself, reached out to experts for help, but nothing worked. I want more than anything to give this to her, to give her back her family. It's the only way I can think to show her how much I appreciate all she's given me. He swiped the back of his hand across his eyes and let out a watery chuckle. "'I'm honestly not usually like this. Ask Potter.' He nodded at his accomplice. "'Too right,' Harry muttered while blinking in his own eyes furiously and trying to dislodge the lump from his throat. 
So I guess that's it, Draco said, sitting up a little straighter and clapping his hands together. I just wanted to introduce myself and let you know how I feel about your amazing daughter. And I hope we'll get a chance to talk soon, in person. He smiled a genuine, if more than a bit relieved, smile and nodded an indication to the end of his thoughts and insights. That was great, Malfoy, Harry grinned, genuinely impressed with everything that had been said and how spot on the portrayal of his best friend was. He had known the two had grown extremely close, but Draco's monologue showed the depth of his awareness of who Hermione was as a person, as well as how much he cared for her. Although the thought was still mildly unnerving, he had to admit Draco Malfoy was a perfect match for the curly-haired witch. Draco handed him an empty vial, already labeled simply with his first name, and watched as Harry's face took a more serious look as he concentrated on the memory he wished to extract. Touching the end of the wand to his temple, he pulled out a thin, silvery strand and swirled it into the glass container, stoppering it securely. He then pocketed all of the vials with a satisfied huff. "'Right then. All set,' Harry announced cheerfully. "'Hopefully they'll view it with an open mind and not immediately demand my head on a spike for all they probably know about how I treated her previously,' Draco grimaced and scrubbed his hands over his face. "'You're not the same arrogant prat, Malfoy. If Hermione can accept that, I'm sure her parents will. Plus, I doubt they know everything about what went on over the years. She probably only told them the big stuff, like the time you had to go with us into the Forbidden Forest for tattling, or the time she punched you in the face, or the time you got turned into a fluffy, bouncing— Yeah, yeah, I get it, Draco groused, shoving Harry in the arm as the two made their way towards the hall. 